All right, we're back with another ReZero analysis where I go over the last episode after I have slept and really thought about it to kind of give you my full form thoughts. Now, what was the point of today's episode? Well, the last episode. Subaru is back and he's angry. Bro is locked in though. And he's different this time, right? Better Goose's therapy. I honestly think that it actually helped, right? And right over here, we go to Crucia's palace. And this dude, William, what's his name? William Fletcher, William Fella, Rusty Fella, something Fella. This guy is supposed to be like a super important merchant, right? Treasurer of the Capitals Merchant Guild, meaning super rich. And he was the one helping Krush monopolize the source of iron, right? Because in the conversation with Anastasia, what happened? Uh, dragon carriages are all being bought up, but also Iron is as well, because it's wartime, and during wartime, obviously, you need to produce weapons, and iron is an important source of that, which is really interesting, because... One second. The interesting part here is how Otto also had a shitload of oil to sell, but, like, oil, you would think, is way more expensive in modern warfare, but that's the thing, it's not modern warfare. That's why oil is out of season right now, and iron is more valuable than oil. Russell Fella, he seems like a very cunning individual, right? He already knew who Subaru was, so maybe Krush has talked to Russell about this. There's some interesting conversation here before Subaru even gets to, you know, the cart of how if Krush's Sama's goal should be attained, then, uh, what did he say, right? Then I'm sure it would suit your desires. What does that mean? It means that if Krush became the king or the queen then Wilhelm's desires he's got some backstory that we don't know about what does he want I'm not sure I know that Crucius platform is meant for no more shall we be uh, indebted to the dragon fuck the covenant this kingdom will be for the people and then this allows Wilhelm to do what exactly <laughs> uh, I don't know <laughs> I got no clue but there there's something going on with Wilhelm and you know what his desires are with Crucius' goals. Russell Fellow, very cunning guy, shrewd, dealing in all the capital's internal and external financial matters. He's kind of like the Eastern Merchants, huh? Like the, what's it called? Intensura, right? The Eastern Merchants there is like a very mysterious people and they're all like seemingly the puppet masters. So, you know, these merchant dudes, it's very important. And I hope we see him in the future as well. Now, after that, oh yeah, this part. The entire time, we can't look at Subaru's eyes. We saw it at the end of the episode, but look how intentionally they cut the eyes off. And then Wilhelm says, you got something to say? You can clearly see that like Subaru has such like a stink eye. Right now, Wilhelm, he, he already saw through Subaru, in my opinion, in the earlier episodes where they were not... I don't think it's even a, accurate to call it a spar or a training session, right? And, and he, I felt like, could convey... Like, they were having, like, a conversation. Wilhelm could, like, read him through those, you know, fights. And then, this part. So, I still don't think Krush is in the wrong here, right? Because the whole point of this is Subaru trying to get Krush and, like, stronger allies to form. But how do you expect them to just help you if we're the enemy opposition? The main thing here, again, is if you wish to negotiate, you need to show me what I stand to gain. And because we don't know anything about Krush, Felix, or Wilhelm, what their incentives are, how could we possibly dangle what they want in front of them? Just like what Anastasia told us in today's episode, right? So because we have nothing to barter, and Subaru is basically just too angry and raging, he fucks up this entire conversation. He messes up the entire conversation, burns this bridge. But we can have another run if the White Whale kills us, right? And I think uh, I, even in the Chibi review, and I think some people might uh, feel this way as well, but I don't think what Krush is doing here is wrong, right? A lot of people say, I cannot believe this green-haired girl literally is fine with uh, innocent people dying. But like, why are you empathizing with the villagers rather than Krush's people? Because the episodes leading up to this, we spent time with the villagers. We spent time with the people of the domain of Roswell Mathers. Therefore, it's a closer connection, and we feel like if you don't help us, that's fucked up. But think about it from Krush's perspective. Do you expect her to sacrifice her own forces for this? 
it seems kind of all backwards. It's very hypocritical. How could you possibly say, how could you not care about the villagers when you don't even care about Crucia's people? I don't think this is simply turning a blind eye. I think she's making an intentional choice here after carefully figuring out what the cards are in play and made a decision that benefits her. It's wartime. And this is perfectly reasonable. I think Krush has shown just utmost professionalism and is very reasonable and probably is still willing to help if we could just fucking figure out what her incentives are. And this part, right? If she dies, everything ends anyways. And then I thought that Krush was going to say, okay, I'll help now. But no, we got baited. She's like, understood. In that case... Karsten family will render no assistance whatsoever because the entire conversation was never about I want to save Amelia, right? And that was such a wake-up call for Subaru, I think. And again, I just don't feel like Krush needs to do anything here. Amelia literally just like goes away if Krush lets this happen, right? It's kind of fucked up, but again, it's a royal selection arc. If you're going for the throne, would you not, you know, be like that? I liked... How Felix got pissed off here, right? If you have the power to save them, why wouldn't you? Because it's not her fault. It's not her domain. It's, <clears throat> it's Roswell's fault, right? It's his domain. It's Amelia. You are the lords of the domain. If you can't even, like, protect your own people, then, like, how the fuck could you possibly, like, blame us for that? And another thing is with the witch's stench. About how... No, no, not the witch's stench. But how it seems uh, suspicious right now. I think that the author of this show, Pepe, he does a fantastic job in balancing this OP regression powers. First, we saw the psychological impacts that Subaru has, obviously. Um, because he can't just abuse dying. It's scary to die. It's really scary to die. So he can't just abuse that. And it's when you come back from a regression loop with all future details like, oh yeah, the, the witch's cult is going to attack us in like three days. Then like, how would you possibly know that? Now it's like super suspicious. So it's counterproductive. It's actually the power is working against him because people will not believe him, even though he knows everything. He needs to figure out a way how to overcome that. This part's pretty funny. Have you never sensed any such inclination in him. Rem literally pauses for three seconds and then <laughs> says no. Which is hilarious because she's one of the first people to ever, you know, say the witch's stench on you is so sickening or some shit in episode 7. And of all the people right now who can smell, Rem can, Biko can, I'm assuming Puck and Roswell can, I don't know. And I'm assuming Betrugus can because he literally said like Subaru like you're loved by the witch Rem just fucking glazing as usual just completely glazing and then Subaru like this part where he got so angry I've never seen him this upset in episode 15 when he was chained up as Betrugus left he let out a rage cry for sure that was angry but like man have you ever seen his face like this that's one of the beautiful things about this character in my opinion that a main character can show these faces. You would never expect a main character to show these kind of faces. Even in episode... What was that one? The one where Isabara told Emilia that you have a debt that you could never repay. ReZero has such a fantastic way of utilizing their main characters to be such a different main character from like a perfect Ikemen. And it's way more interesting like this. And like he even got on the ground to like bow down. But again, like, even if you throw your pride away, you're too wrathful, and it's not gonna work, bro. Cruz sees your, sees your bullshit. You're you suggesting I'm using Emilia as a pretense for getting revenge against him. What was the exact line, right? What else but murderous intent could one call from the glint in your eye? There's specific lines that Cruz says, right, about how lying in the madness. Let's see if we can find it. If your own lie doesn't fool you, it will not deceive others. This was the one line that was kind of confusing to me. Because here, it says, if your own lie doesn't fool you, it will not deceive others. Meaning, he has to believe in his own lie. And right now, he is not. I'm not too sure about that. But she follows up later saying, you, believe in your own, you believing in your own lie, that is just pure madness. Let's see where she says that. Oh, and then Wilhelm, bro. When Wilhelm literally gets in front of Subaru, this felt like... It looked like a father that's disappointed in me. I like Wilhelm a lot. 
mainly because he's Von Austria and he's probably super OP and we haven't seen him really in battle yet. I hope he gets to have a great moment, but like we we look it looks like we disappointed him, right? So I'm like, oh man. Rem has a lot of moments here too. This is a good moment where Rem actually did not glaze and just enable Subaru. This Rem is just kind of cautiously standing there, obviously. And she loves Subaru so much that she's willing to support him even right now. But I feel like you should slap him. But that's not a Rem thing to do. At least she stands up against him and says, please calm down. Oh yeah, this is the part I'm talking about. The second half, where before we said, you need to like believe, if you don't believe in your own lies, that no one else will. And Crucier says, I can pretty much tell when people are lying. And she confirms that Subaru is not lying, right? I can say you are not lying. You adamantly believe that your rant is true, and that is madness. So this is the part I was a little bit confused about. So earlier, when she said, in order to... If you don't believe in your own lie, then no one else will. But right now, you adamantly believe in your own lies. But they are not lies. You adamantly believe that your rant is true. That is nothing short of madness. This part is still confusing to me. Right? Krush says that he's not lying. Because what he's saying is true. Those things will happen. But this is madness to her. So you're not lying. You're just mad. That that's simply that that that's simply it. Cause like again, the, the the confusion I'm having is in the first half of like, if you want me to believe in your own lie, you gotta believe that yourself. But maybe that wasn't really directed at Subaru like that, right? He's more like you adamantly believe that your rant is true. Maybe it has to do with more of the Amelia shit of like how. He's not doing this for Amelia, he's doing this for himself. I'm not sure, but too deep for me. There's nothing short of madness right there, she says. And then boom! He bites his lip! And then Chris says heal! There's multiple points where he bites his lips this episode, actually. So you gotta kind of portray his wrath and anger. And this part? The kind of dictator who abandons the weak. No! Krush is not abandoning the weak. You are giving a blanket statement out of context, utilizing your own wrath to make it seem like Krush is doing a, a terrible thing. No, she's not. She has no obligations to help you. She has no obligations to sacrifice her own men. Think about the casualties that she could suffer. For what? You need to give us a reason. And until you give us a reason, then there is no alliance. And Subaru, if he could just figure this out, obviously he can't right now. He's too angry. He's too mad. It's just another bridge being burned. But hey, we learned a lesson here about, you know, believing in our rant is a fucking madness. We need to, you know, think about protecting Amelia. It's not really for ourselves. And Rem says, and my master said, I thank you. At least we're being courteous here. Rem just cleaning after Subaru. Sad as all fuck, man. And then this part. Another part where Subaru kind of snaps and is angry. And Rem just like stands. And just, what is she thinking, right? What is she thinking? And Subaru also says, oh, oh, before that, what the hell is Roswell doing? Look at that part. Look at that part. What the hell is Roswell? Because he's busy with officials. But what if he's actually not? Right? Roswell has been required to visit some official within the domain. But what if this is all a lie? Is it, isn't it just co too coincident? Like, too convenient? You know, I was thinking about Reinhardt as well. Obviously, Reinhardt and Roswell are super strong. And it might be too convenient for Subaru to get bailed out by them. So this is just like a way to remove them from the plot. Is there an actual reason beyond that? Is Roswell planning the assassination? I honestly have no fucking clue. But I don't think that Roswell's planning it because he needs Amelia to win the throne. And then what is this? Oh yeah, this part? What does he say? Oh God. And then I think he says, why is everyone so useless, right? Reinhardt's on a lolicon shoot, away from the capital, on a... What the fuck is a courtesy call? I guess knights? Like, <laughs> it's like a knight thing, Imperial Knights are on a courtesy call, and he says, why is everyone so fucking useless here? Right? <laughs> this part, damn it, why is everyone so useless? Why is... And Rem, man! And then Rem just stares, right? Rem just stares and... I hope that Ren didn't think that she thought she was useless too. But more just like judgmental blank stares from Rem to Subaru in this run as she realizes, damn, like this guy's really fucking mad. Like he's really going through it, man. 
and then what happens? So like, how does this work too? How does this work? There's like different mansions in Dragon Kingdom Lugunica. So is everyone from this kingdom? Like Priscilla, Anastasia, Krush, they're all from this kingdom. So these are all their own mansions. I, for some reason, thought that they're from different kingdoms. I don't know why I thought that. Straight up from different nations. Nah, they're, they're all from Lugunica, right? Every candidate is born and, well, maybe not born, but raised and primarily lives in Lugunica. Is this correct? We are at Priscilla's mansion. Everything is red decor. Pretty cool. And I don't think Priscilla really gives a fuck about any of this shit, right? Priscilla just wants to test, like, I guess the servant master relationship. I was thinking about this more and more as we watched the TV video too. Yeah, Anastasia is not from here, right? She has that Osaka dialect. Any jester who makes it this far has mastered his act. We're a joke to you? Yes, we are. But you haven't thought things through. In trying to aid your ally, you corner them, benefit the enemy, and lose all control. Priscilla, leg animation. I appreciate that. You're better off dying. <laughs> like, oh my god, Priscilla. Dude, this shit was out of nowhere. Like, dude. Thank you. Who would have thought <laughs> that the fan comes out of her titty, dude? What? I'm assuming the fan can is her main weapon. Like the fan isn't just for her to look cool. It's like an actual weapon. I'm not sure, but that fan was fucking sick, bro. The devotion you show for your master is commendable if nothing else. So I'll give you an opportunity. And this is a test here. Priscilla doesn't give a fuck about Amelia. So again, let, 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 let's just go, right? So it's a test. It's a chance and basically lick the floor, right? Lick, not the floor, lick the toes. And if you lick the toes, then I will help you. But if you don't, then I won't. So, and I thought at this moment, if he like threw away his pride for the sake of Amelia, look at this. He remembers Amelia. Who is he doing this for? And then he licks the toe, but Priscilla gets fucking pissed off here. So mad, bro. Boom. It seems you really are just an insignificant man because she was testing and I got a lot of different interpretations of here because this is neither loyalty or devotion. Us throwing our pride away is neither of that. It's worse. It's bad like a dog's dependence or a pig's greed. A dog and a pig are animals. Dependence and greed are innate desires that animals cannot override, right? Thank you, an anonymous gifter for the five gifted subs, man. That's very generous of you. Thank you so much. But notice the specific examples Priscilla uses. Dog and a pig. Clearly low intellectual beings that are not humans and therefore cannot overcome their animalistic desires. She also calls Amelia half-wit. She is seemingly closer to a Nazi, if anything, in terms of human superiority, species superiority, and thinking that she is better than Amelia because Amelia's got elf blood, which means that she's, you know, <laughs> like an abomination. And then what does she do? <clears throat> uh huh. You lazy pig who only knows desire. So, why is she pissed off? People were saying... No, I didn't call her a Nazi. I said she's the closest thing to a Nazi if you compare their superiority things compared to other species and races. But... It just seemed like she just hates beings that are stupid and unintelligent or animalistic, right? You only know desires. There's a term pig's greed used as well. Greed is obviously a seven deadly sin, but I'm not completely convinced that that is the specific sin at displayed here. And it's more of like you not being able to overcome your animalistic desires and being a fucking human and being able to like show a little bit of pride as a human and show me that you are someone worth, you know, dealing with. Some other people were saying that this part was more like, even though Priscilla doesn't give a fuck about Amelia, it's about how Subaru represents her master, his master, right? Remove Emilia from the context, and it's about how Subaru represents his master, and this act that he showed disappointed or humiliated his own master. Therefore, he is worse than trash. That is the main interpretations that I've been getting and understanding. And bro, this part, she took it so personally. Like, how is this? Why is she so mad here? Don't you think this is going beyond, like, rationality? Like, because we licked your toes, sure, it was an embarrassing moment, and we made a fool of ourselves. 
But she's literally saying, I will strike down any camp you are part of. Like, I will follow you, all your friends, your loved ones. You will never know happiness. I'll always kill everyone you're related to. Your careless behavior and attitude has led me to that decision. Fucking crazy. And she's obviously got superhuman strengths. And Aldebaran. Al's real name, which Al does not like. Al was listening the entire time. And, you know, he goes, Al's such a good guy. Al is such a brother, man. He calls us a brother, too. And he raises Priscilla up. Don't get so mad, princess. That fierce look will make your cute face drop in value. <laughs> There's got to be a little bit of a mix, right? Of the fierce tiger and the cute face that she has. Yeah. Al's, uh... I don't know. I wonder how Al gets treated in behind closed doors. Take him away at once, Alderman, before I fuck up your face again, right? So... Obviously, Priscilla's mad. That's why she's calling Aldebaran Aldebaran rather than Al. His face got disfigured. And I thought that he was some sort of like dragon hybrid. Because even here, you can see his neck, right? It's got like little rings around it. And it's a dragon kingdom. And I'm like, is he supposed to be a dragon human hybrid? I don't know, but it sounds like it's just like a horrible disfigurement in the past. And his face got fucked up. And now he's simply just wearing a helmet. I don't know how he knows Priscilla, like how they met. I hear there's a lot of cut content from the light novel. Um, I wish there was more Owl Lord that I could figure out without getting spoiled. But yeah, I hear there's a lot of shit here that got cut out, man. And then <clears throat> she's forgetting that I saved her when we first met. And you're forgetting that she did not need your help. She was perfectly fine. You were not necessary, but again, Subaru's pride, just wrath, just overcoming his rational, you know, logic. And this part, we got baited, straight up. I thought that, like, this is by chance, that we got lucky, and we met, you know, another candidate immediately. And I'm like, huh, what are the odds of that? Yeah, exactly. What are the odds of that? Because there's, it's, it's not a coincidence. They planned this shit from the fucking beginning. Remember the art of the deal, negotiating, bartering, right? In business, you need to be prepared. She's already prepared like 10 steps in advance and we're just fucking walking into it. Someone mentioned uh, the star here and related to Hoshino Ai, right? The star, Oshinoko, Hoshino Ai. I'm not sure if uh, there's any connection there. Probably just a coincidence, but hey, in her headcanon, maybe there's a bit of that reference. Who fucking knows? <laughs> and then what happens? We go to a cafe and immediately look. Look at the people around us. They were already, you know, wearing the cat army. It's it, her entire army was there. I made a note of that. I thought that other people, you know, uh, I was like, oh, look, you know, there's other people. Is this like team lunch or something? It was beyond the team lunch. And... Wonder what hap- Oh, trying to get on your partner's good side is the basic rule of negotiation. We should straight- I think what Anastasia told us probably is one of the most important things. I think that Priscilla, what she taught us, is not as important. It's Anastasia, Krush, and then Priscilla in terms of the lessons and how valuable it is to Subaru right now. That's what you're lacking, Subaru. You have no aura. You have no charisma, bro. And why is the dragon- Trying to appeal sentimentally is the worst strategy there is. Exactly, right? We need to give people actual value. They need a reason, whether it be intel, whether it be material goods, services, something that is beneficial for the other party. If you don't have that, you can't just say, oh, please help me. I'm so sad and angry. Please. People are going to die. You need to do this. It's like, nah, bro. You need to figure out how to make them want to help you. Sentimentality is not going to fucking work. Feels and vibes will not work. In this bag, I have a feeling that it's like an infinite bag. You know those isekai box gear items? Or it's like an infinite storage. I could see something like that. Or it's just simply her money bag purse. Like, it's kind of funny that her purse is literally just like a wallet. Because like a wallet, these like... I've seen wallets like this where they kind of tip at the end, right? But this is also her purse and her entire thing is like about money. So her fucking purse is a fucking wallet. Who is buying up all the dragon carriages? Why is that happening? Because remember, dragon carriage is one of the reasons why we can get to Amelia's mansions in a reasonable way. 
but the white whale will block the rogue with fog if we take too long and we need to go roundabout way and now someone's also buying up the dragon carriages because this is wartime and it's there's more transportation needed to transport the goods let's say like because like the iron's bought up right now too right iron's bought up by krush and with the help of russell fella and if you mass produce those iron you monopolize it you can sell it at your own rate right it's very smart to understand be able to predict the future buy up all the commodity that's important for that meta and then sell that because you're the only one you know with that you know supply obviously demand's going to be high but the supply is low because you're the only one that has it more money you can make and in order to then transport the goods you need the dragon carriages is that what's going on I'm wondering if there's someone intentionally trying to stop Subaru from getting to the mansion by buying up all the fucking dragon carriages, but I think that is too specific. It's probably not what's going on, right? What's next? And she even helps us, right? She even, like, helps us and gave us... I thought that this is, like, a scam or something, but she went up and, like, helped us out and gave us that. And she also mentioned Julius' and Julius' sacrifice as well, right? But, right, before we give this away, remember, you want something in return. Intel, right? She wants information and more people behind the scenes of her private army that you could tell from the beginning, right? That we were always surrounded by Anastasia's private army. <laughs> Mimi's too cute. And just as she's cute, she's probably also strong. Not as strong as Reinhard. But like, Mimi versus Rem Demon Mode. Who would win? Do we have any... Lower accurate power scalers in here. I'm willing to get spoiled on Mimi versus Demon Lord Rem. How smart, how strong is Mimi? Does anyone know if Mimi's stronger than Rem? Bro. <laughs> oh shit. What the fuck? It's so cute. It's such a fucking cute Borgar, bro. Look at this shit. Oh, Mimi's so fucking cute, dude. Mimi seems to be a mage, right? Maybe not like a close combat warrior, but has like a staff. So I'm assuming Mimi is a mage. Second command. Yep. Private army. Kararagi, right? She's from Kararagi. So she's not from... So Kararagi is a kingdom? Like Dragon Kingdom Lugunika? Whatever kingdom Kararagi? I'm not too sure, but she has a different dialect, right? Osaka dialect. Hoshin Company's personal mercenary squad, Iron Fang. This is our private army. Iron Fang. She is very cute. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> Sleeping with her in your arms. Yeah, honestly, that'd be very cute. Lots of gathering. Atmosphere is different. We're talking about the war, right? People are getting ready for war. Price of goods are going up. Commodities are changing. Supply and demand fluctuating, right? And the most valuable products are iron goods. And again, so ironic that iron is more expensive here than oil during war times because this is like medieval times rather than modern warfare. So the smartest thing that you can do right now is to be able to predict, like before the royal selection happened, buy up all the iron, then redistribute that shit. And Russell Fellas is doing that shit. <laughs> Nimi gets a Borgar. Oh, dude. <laughs> this is too cute. This is too fucking cute, bro. Look at, look at Mimi with the Borgar. Oh, I'm, I'm getting too distracted by Mimi's cuteness, man. Dutchness Krush Karsten. So... Anastasia is trying to get some intel out of Natsuki Subaru to make him spoil and leak. I don't think this is a bluff. I think that Anastasia does have a rough idea that it is Krush who is, you know, handling all the iron. But it mustn't be just herself. She must be getting the help of someone else, right? And then Subaru leaks, right? Boom. He's not even aware that right now we're negotiating. When you're talking like this, when you're yapping, you can't just like leak the details. You're just basically giving it away for free. And then boom, Russell fellas. Yep, and then Anastasia got what she wanted. Yep, boom. Fairly informative, stole that intel. But like, it's like a trade. Right? I mean, this wasn't really bad of a trade. We needed a dragon carriage. And she offered a dragon carriage as we gave her the intel of Russell fella. But I guess the feeling of... Being deceived, being unaware that the entire time this was a setup was the thing Subaru was mad about, right? After fighting with Krush San last night, you just... You, how did you know, though? How did you know that we were fighting with Krush? Anastasia must have informants around, huh? Because that's very specific. Anastasia fucking knew that we had a fight. Mouth, eyes, and expressions. That's right. We're talking about the... 
body language, right? Physical body language that tells if someone is more angry, sad, whatever. If you know a person's mindset, you can manipulate them better. You set me up from the start? Yeah. And then this is the angry part. As Subaru gets humiliated and embarrassed because like, damn, you were just playing with me the entire fucking time. But like, does using underhanded methods like that make you feel good about yourself? I feel like you need to acknowledge that you got played and that you should learn. Humble yourself. Why are you getting so upset? Because your pride and ego is on the fucking line right now. Is what she did that evil? I don't even think so. You needed the dragon carriage. She provided the dragon carriage. However, before giving you that, she got information out of you with some negotiation one-on-one skills that she's even teaching you on, on, on top of that. Like, like this dude, <laughs> the underhanded methods. Yeah, remember the fight against Julius? The pocket sand move. He went for the ground and, you know, did that shit. Like, where is the hypocrisy, man? If you want to convince someone you're righteous, you got to show something to merit it. That's right. And you are all talk. You are all just fiction, no facts, right? All you do is talk, yap, 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 but there's nothing delivered. We have not seen a single thing that you've done for us to feel like you're valuable, that you're worthy. And at the end of arc three, I wonder how everyone's perspective of Subaru will change. I'm going to assume that the end of arc three will be able to handle the whale, better goose, and save Amelia at the mansion. And by then, will other people see Subaru be like, Whoa, this guy's amazing. He did all that shit. Who knows? It'd be nice to see him get more clout and respect from other important characters. Because right now, we're just kind of useful. We're useless, man. The things you've done are what determine your reputation, and we've done nothing. Well, we've done a lot, but Anastasia hasn't seen those things. And this part is funny. Because she has no clue. <laughs> the things you've done won't ever go away. <laughs> what do you mean? They will go away. <laughs> we just gotta go in. Eh. And here, boom. Mimi shows her weapon. Mimi's weapon of choice is a staff. This is looking like magic. Not melee. Maybe melee. I would love to see how Mimi fights in the future. There's nothing Natsuki can do anyway. That's so fucked up. <laughs> Nimi, don't worry about it. You don't have to get all hostile. There's nothing Subaru can do. He's useless. <laughs> oh man, that's actually embarrassing. <laughs> and then this part. I guess Julius' efforts went to waste. Because like, he sacrificed his career to make him look like the villain. By, and kind of bailing Subaru out during that, you know, quote unquote, duel, right? I still feel like we owe Julius a favor. And a, an apology. And to make up. And to somehow get help. I bet Julius would help. Julius, I think, is a uh, person that actually does respect Emilia a lot. Maybe it was just knight nice chivalry when they first met, but I feel like Julius would help, man. wonder what he's up to right now. I guess not even you would do something that dumb. <laughs> All right. This part was so funny, right? Because the thing of, I guess, even you won't do anything that dumb is like, Super got mad, right? He got so mad. That he was trying to like prove a point by ripping up the dragon carriage, you know, uh, that uh, Anastasia gave to him, right? But he couldn't because he needs it. So like imagine like that ego, like you're like so mad at the conversation. You want to show a fucking point like you're not the, you're not my boss. And you're like, oh, I can't. I need this still. That, that That's another level of humiliation, man. That really is. Like, maybe more humiliating than Priscilla? I don't know. It's just like this part where you wanted to show that you're angry and fuck you, but you inherently know that this shit's actually too important to give up and you're wrong. Damn, this is a fucking power move by Nastasia. And then what happens? She leaves some tip. She tells us, be prepared, because everything here was prepared, right? Dangle what the other person wants in front of them. Such important lessons. Straight up, such important lessons that we should be learning. Next time, figure out what Anastasia wants. Dangle it in front of her. Negotiate. Earn her respect. Show her that you're a, you're a cunning, shrewd a negotiator, a businessman that Anastasia will respect. And she'll collaborate. I can see that happening. 
Next time, Priscilla, don't lick her feet. Next time, for Krush, please. I want to save Amelia, lead with that, and figure out an incentive where both parties can uh, benefit. And then we can have strong allies from all three candidates. And now they left, and boom. Yep, cat squad. Why are they all cats, though? Like, this shit is straight up some SAO shit. Like, ALO, where there's an entire faction of cats. What the fuck? Everyone just cat squad? Bye, Mimi. <laughs> bye bye. Yo, we gotta listen to the Mimi bye bye here. Wait, wait, wait. I can't play for too long. I think I can, with the audio on, I think I can play for like a second or something. Bye bye. Oh, bye bye. Mimi too goddamn fucking cute, dude. And this bar guy? This guy obviously got paid a lot and he's like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of here now. <laughs> Look. Because he looks at Subaru and he's like, oh man, this guy's probably so mad that he just got scammed and I got paid a lot for Anastasia. I'm just gonna go away now. Wait, you can't see that, right? Shit, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I'm hiding it, I'm hiding it. Here it is. This is what I'm showing. The bartender guy <laughs> just going out. <laughs> he's like, she. <laughs> okay, here, here. Oh, sorry. Here's Rem. Rem shows up. We got scammed, Rem. And then Rem was trying to figure out what's going on with the Imperial Knights. And that's right. We tried to report them. But then the cults are like mass reporting. They're mass reporting. And there's so many reports that nothing is like feasible. Which is a genius tactic to kind of like obfuscate what's going on. And then what do we do next? We got to go back to the mansion. That's right. We're going to meet Otto next. Is this the same dragon, by the way? From the last run? Because like... I don't know, it feels like every dragon carriage we get, we get the same dragon. I don't know if it's just like a background character dragon, so it doesn't really matter. But it's the same green one, I think. And this time, we're obviously on the road, um... Before the White Whale has created the fog on the road. Because before when White Whale was first mentioned, remember? That was much later. This is still earlier in this timeline. We meet Otto. And then Otto has a bunch of fucking oil. And right here, dude, these other merchants straight up fuck up Otto. Because they reveal that Otto is desperate to sell oil. So we could honestly go in there, dangle some money in front of him, and like buy up the oil at a pretty relatively cheap price and get the carriage. So these other merchants literally showed Otto's like weakness and then made Subaru just like barter. I'm not sure if this is really. Subaru utilizing Anastasia's schemes of negotiating, but rather him getting lucky and just offering money to buy up the oil because we need a carriage for human trafficking, right? That's right. <laughs> this, bro, this shit was so funny. People! Who are, you gonna be who are you gonna be moving? People? We don't want any part in human trafficking. No, 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 Otto. You don't understand. It's the, it's the good kind of human trafficking, right? Like, think about an ambulance. Yeah, an ambulance is also human trafficking. But for a good reason, right? <laughs> and then, yeah, we basically buy the oil. Uh, we get the carriages. Rem has a shitload of coin. And we're on the way. And this is the exact same time that the white whale's about to populate this road. But, like, what is the odds? What is the actual fucking odds of the white whale showing up at this time? Why is the white whale showing up at this time? In this road. And I'm not even talking about this specific run. But even in one of the first runs of this arc, where Rem specifically mentioned there's a white whale, no one has survived against it or something, and we need to like go around it. That obstacle has been there for what reason? To obviously make Subaru look like, you know, it's, it's another, you know, challenge for Subaru, but like, did the witches cult do it? Did Roswell do it? Is it just all coincidence and just unluckiness? I don't know. Uh, we gaslight them here about the phone. We literally say this is futuristic technology. And for a second, this felt like Subaru was back to his usual self. Where he's actually joking, right? Even here, like, it was like, oh man. He's no longer super depressed and angry. He's just kind of making cracking jokes about the Nokia flip phone. And then we get lore. Frugal's tree. Who is Frugal? He's a wise man in the past who planted a tree so big that the tree literally pierces the clouds, or it seems like it. Um, I know that a wise man is not the same as a sage, but they are sometimes used interchangeably. And remember who sealed the witch? A dragon 
a sage and a hero. But I wonder, because people say the hero is interchangeable with sword saint, that sage is also interchangeable with wise man. I'm not sure, but frugal here, very important lore. Tree. Hmm. This is where shit gets interesting, right? This is where it's like, hold the fuck up. The dudes on our right are gone. The dudes on our right are gone. And Subaru is like, where'd the guy in the banana go? Right? But Otto doesn't know. And we see the fog, right? White whale. What are you talking about? Like, is Otto secretly with the white whale? And he is luring Subaru into a trap? And he's gaslighting us? Is Otto crazy? Is this an illusion? That Otto's memories get wiped? What the fuck is going on right now? Subaru remembers. I remember. We see the white fog. Whale, right? Boom. Oh, bro, this part. This part, bro. Dude. When we're like, oh, no. Should we turn the light on on this thing? Because we know the whale is there. We can hear the fucking whale noises. Oh! At that point, I said we should gouge the eye out. Just one point breakthrough. But if we did that, it would probably get enraged. So maybe not a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. Part of me kind of wants to poke at the eye, but I know that if I was there in real life, there's no way I could have done that. I would have been too shocked and scared. I probably would have fallen off the carriage, man. Here is the fucking whale, man. It's so big. Like, that's just the eyeball, too. Like, how huge is it? Fucking crazy. And this white fog. The greed of a pig, Priscilla's name. And that's pretty much the episode, right? That's pretty much it. So, like, I don't know exactly what's going on with Otto. Is he being gaslit? Is he forgetting shit? Is he being mind manipulated? Are we in a Genjutsu? Is Otto working with the white whale? I doubt it. It's funny to think about, but just when you think that it's hard enough with an arc bishop showing up, like, this arc, in terms of difficulty, is on another scale. Arc 1 and arc 2, yeah, it was difficult, but this is on another fucking league. And just when you thought it was hard enough, they dropped a fucking white whale on us. Now we have to fucking kill the white whale or like somehow like seal it or overcome it. Because think about it. This road is the only way to get to the mansion early before the cult members do. And in order to get there before the cult members do, you need to defeat the white whale. If we abandon defeating the white whale, then the other road, it's too late by the time we get there, the cult members are already there. So it's like this impossible scenario where now in order to actually save Amelia from the cult members you need to overcome the white whale and it's like how the fuck are we gonna do that we need a powerful ally we need an army we need Anastasia's army we need Crucia's army we need Priscilla's army if Subaru could just figure out a way to manipulate them like fucking tools like Ayana Koji then yes this is possible but right now it seems pretty impossible and that's it from me hope you guys enjoyed this Review, analysis, whatever you call it, and I'll see you on the next one.